Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. God bless you. Good morning. God bless you, Zoomers. Yes, yes. Heaven and nature sing. Good morning. Welcome to the school of the Holy Spirit. As we make our way to Pentecost while we are in Advent. Yes. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Joy, joy, joy. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Advent. Revolution. that you are rejoicing. I hope that you are excited. Good morning to my Instagram family. Good morning to those of you that are joining us. Uh, you are on Instagram, Zoom, Facebook Live, free conference call. God bless you. Joy. Come on, write it down, write it down, write it down. Joy of the Lord is my strength. Joy, joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He is my joy. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Oh. Joy. <laughs> let joy rise. Let strength rise. Let joy rise. Let strength rise. Hey. Oh. Come on in. Yes. Yes. Ooh. Hallelujah. Ooh. Yes. Yes. 
joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. That's what we are rejoicing. That's what we are rejoicing. We are rejoicing because of the joy of the Lord is in our earth. Messiah has come. And while others are waiting for the Messiah, while others are ignorant of his coming, we who are born of the spirit, we are aware, as the kids say, we woke, <laughs> that we know that Messiah has come. And guess what? He brought joy and he put what? Laughter into our souls. And we have to allow Holy Spirit to bring that joy to us. We must allow joy good morning to my spiritual director good morning janine good morning get your life back god bless you dr jackson god bless you dr ingram good morning tj472 good morning this is the day joy the joy of the lord is our strength Woo. you can't allow anything circumstance situation to compromise the joy of the Lord. Joy, joy to the world. The Savior reigns. Do you understand that men everywhere know this? Rock hills and floods, plains, mountains, rivers, the sea. The sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. <laughs> joy to the world. Hallelujah. Joy. Hey, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Joy. Joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hey. Yes, yes, yes. Come on in. Like, tag, and share. We're going our way to Pentecost. And we got to go through Advent <laughs> to get to the upper room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you feel so free when you let offenses go. You get so free. He rules the world with truth and grace and may 
the nation's crew. Come on, sing it. The wonders, his righteousness, and wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and one wonders, wonders of his love. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And this is what you want to always fight fiercely for your fellowship with Holy Spirit. You must fight fiercely, fiercely <laughs> for your fellowship with Holy Spirit. You cannot allow any situation any circumstance to cut off your fellowship with holy spirit good morning bishop jackson the joy of the lord is our strength we are thankful people praise god we are thankful for the messiah we are thankful never lose your joy alfred benyard joy to the world sharon smith John Andrew Hart, oh my God, I am so excited because when you allow Holy Spirit to dismantle your offenses, offense, your walls, your fences, whoo, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is our strength. He rules the world with truth and grace. Oh my God, this is a wonderful season of Advent, joy, faith, hope, love. And this is the season, my bishops, to release any offense, any anger that you are uh, uh, using as a code word, to release any disgust, disappointment. Uh, bitterness, anything that's lingering. Whoa, glory to God. This is the day. This is the season for you to let it go. Cedric Brown, good morning, Lady Vicey. Coming up the timeline, Charlotte Thompson, my God, Monica Monet, Brittany Christian, Tierra Jones, Charles Dove. Evangelist Akiva Rogers, hallelujah, Sheila Donald Johnson, Pearl Evans, you have, you have bathed and massaged that offense long enough. You have bathed, you've talked about it, you've prayed about it, hallelujah, you have gone through it all long enough, that offense. Sometimes it's called grief. Sometimes it's called anger. Sometimes it's called I'm just in my feelings. Sometimes it's called trauma. Sometimes it's called rejection. Sometimes it's called betrayal. Sometimes we call it by many different names that sound acceptable, but the Bible calls it offense. Ah. Oh, my God, Dr. Kadesha Henry, Dr. Patricia James, come on here. Receive, release, and receive the life, the joy, the peace of Holy Spirit. Let it go. Hallelujah. Because as long as you hold on to it, you will live in isolation. You'll be so angry and the devil will lie to you and tell you that, uh, you know, uh, you know that, um, uh, you know, those people don't like you. You know, those people don't love you. You know, those people don't care nothing about you and you will retreat and hide because you are offended. And we are calling it what it is. It is offense. And offense brings fences, walls, 
barriers because you don't want to be healed. You want to uh, steep in it. You want to marinate, <laughs> but you can't do it and walk in fellowship with Holy Spirit. You can't do it, folks. There is no way that you and I can be offended. So we have to ask Holy Spirit to reveal to us, where am I offended? Because offense is a condition of the human heart. Offense is not just a feeling, it's a condition that is now attacking your heart. It is now attacking the safety of your heart. And we're drilling down in Holy Spirit's ability to dismantle, help us dismantle the wall of offense brick by brick. Oh my God, oh my God. One of the most amazing experiences that I had while being on this side of heaven has been visiting Israel. I'll be going again in 2023 by the grace of God. And one of the beautiful experiences after the upper room, after the Sea of Galilee, after going to the empty tomb, after visiting the Mount of Olives, after visiting all of the sacred places that we read in the scripture, one of the most amazing experiences that shifted my life was actually the Wailing Wall. And I remember when we were on the bus, our tour guide, Abraham, he said, well, we've arrived to the wall and I want you to take your time. He said, because this is where the tour guide is not in control. And I said, wow, what's getting ready to happen, right? Well, he said, when you get down to the wall, he said, there is a presence there. So take your time. And so if you remember the walls of Jerusalem, as David was rebuilding the temple, as, as Solomon was finishing and completing, one of the things was the walls of Jerusalem. And so the Eastern wall, the Western wall. So these were the walls that protected Jerusalem. And there would be watchmen that would walk these walls at night. And the kings and those in authority would go and inquire, watchmen, what of the night? In other words, are we safe? Do you see an enemy? Do you see any, any intruder coming? And so there was always around Jerusalem, the walls and the gates. And these walls, were never dismantled in all of the intrusions and invasions that the people of God experienced. The walls always remained. And although the temples were destroyed, the walls have remained. And so the Western wall is the wailing wall. It is the wall that remains of Zerubbabel's temple. It is the wall that remains so that now it has become a place of prayer, a place of intercession. And every Sabbath, the wall is, is completely loaded with people. It's completely the population of people. They bring their families, men and women, and they come, women come in their prayer clothing. They bring their prayer books and the men come and there's a there's a gate there's a fence uh between the men and the women but it's the same wall and when you get down there the sound of prayer 
the sound of God, the aroma is there. And the area that they have given the women is smaller than the area that they've given the men. And around this time, the menorah is lit. It's amazing. It's amazing. You can see uh, the remaining of the of Zerubbabel's temple. You can see some of it still standing. And you can even go in and you can get to the eastern wall because the walls are still there. That space changed my life. I had an encounter at that wall that was amazing. And people come, yes, Dr. Abathy, and they come and put their prayer requests inside of the cracks of the wall. And so for thousands of thousands of years, that wall has been standing. And I remember hearing the old saints say, when you pray, turn your face to the wall. I didn't know what that meant, but I like the sound of it. <laughs> but when I got down there, glory to God. <laughs> Woo, glory, glory, hallelujah. The women were sitting in chairs and they were, they were reading from their prayer books and the sound. And there were those that were standing at the wall. They were praying to God. Oh my God. And it was such an experience. And so you had to kind of wait to get there so as women were praying and they would move back then others could get to the wall and i remember the old saints the old mothers sainted mothers would say turn your face to the wall and i laid my face on that wall oh my god i don't remember much except weeping and crying and wailing and when i got myself together it was like two hours or so later and people were still there and the bus was waiting because they understood the assignment of that wall. And I think about that wall often when I pray. I think about that wall and I imagine in my mind that I am standing at that wall again with my face laid on the stones of the wall that were built so many thousands and thousands of years ago. And how fortified the wall is. And that the wall represented for the people of God protection. The wall represented provision. The wall was there. And it fortified. It, was, it made them a fortified city because of those walls. Imagine Zerubbabel, imagine Solomon, imagine David, imagine all of these people that we read about that built this and it still stands today, unmoved, unmoved with even the intruser, intruders and the invasions. Imagine that that wall still stands today. <laughs> and we thank God for that wall. But let me tell you something about another wall. <laughs> and I wanted you to hear my testimony, I guess, because I believe that sometimes we don't realize how absolutely strong the wall of offense is. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, and I want you to look at this, and it says that an offended friend is harder to win back than a fortified city. <laughs> oh my God. That an offended friend is harder to win back than a fortified city. And that arguments separate friends, my God, <laughs> like a gate locked with bars. I want you to hear that again. I mean, Proverbs 18, it says that a 
brother offended now from the NL, from the new king, that was the NLT, is harder to win than a strong city and contentions are like the bars of a castle, my God. <laughs> so when we are feeling offended, we build walls. We build walls to protect ourselves. And we become fortified cities with walls of offense around us. Now, this is what uh, Jesus is referring to in Matthew 24 when he talks about how the love of many will wax cold. Well, once you start building the walls and you begin to fortify, you begin to retreat, those walls now become isolating. Whereas now you are locked behind your own walls. Now you are, you, you are a fortified city. And when you build these walls, then you lock the gates because the heart is injured or the heart has suffered an attack, the heart, uh, which is deceitfully wicked, which many of us don't realize. Many of you, uh, bitterness, bitterness, rebellion, resentment, retaliation. You can pick any of those re's. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when those walls go up and you come into that space, rebellion is inevitable. Somebody write that down. Woo! <laughs> now you are a prisoner behind your own wall. I love this, Brittany. Retarded. <laughs> I love that. Absolutely. Rebellion, resentment, what? Retarded. Because now your behavior begins to change. Your conversation begins to change. Oh, my God. Woo, Rabbi Kishkato. Now you are a prisoner behind your own walls because now you want to protect yourself. Now the walls of offense are, are, are so strong, like that wall in Israel. It's so strong, it's so powerful that it has, it has been there for thousands of thousands of years. Now it's a good wall, but I wanted to show you how the wall that you build has eternal eternal impact now you are behind your own walls with your offense Ooh, and everybody else pays everybody pays alfred benyard everybody pays everybody pays in a relationship others pay you pay Others pay your worship, your praise, your prayer life, your love for serving, your, your love for, for being good in the earth begins to dissipate. <laughs> Pastor Monica says, you built a whole apartment around an argument, around an offense. 
around something that that was a lie, wasn't true to begin with. I asked the question. I said, how long were you offended before betrayal took place? Whew, my God, that betrayal didn't, didn't happen overnight. That betrayal was the outcome of a, an offense that had been massaged a long time. Happy birthday, Valerie Thomas, and everybody pays. Everybody pays. You pay, the family pays, the relationships pay. <laughs> Blessings, Lawyers Thompson. Welcome, darling. Welcome, Kai. Welcome, welcome, Crystal Lee. Welcome. Woo, Lanita, God bless you. Hallelujah. Woo, Hadi the Oshata. And if you're on the other side of that betrayal, you are the victim or you're the person that the betrayal is intended to hurt, to prove a point. That thing stings, folks. That, that, ain't, that, ain't, no, that ain't no walk away from moment. That, that, that's something. If you're on the other side of that thing, if you are one of the ones that the rebellion and the betrayal was meant to injure, and don't ever think that a betrayal is not intended to injure. Oh, it's, it's intended to injure you. It had the intent in it from the beginning because of the offense. Now, if you're on the other side of that, now you want someone to pay for that. And your hurt is so overwhelming. And your hurt is so authentic. Your hurt is legitimate. <laughs> oh my God. But your fellowship with Holy Spirit is not worth it. As real, as, as ugly, as painful as it may have been. Your fellowship with Holy Spirit is what you sacrifice to carry that over. My God, Tracy. She says in movies, the trails lead to sequels and sagas in ongoing scenarios and scenes that lead you to get an Oscar, Emmy, Tony, or even a Grammy Award. In the end, someone always is on their deathbed. Good God, Tracy. I don't watch enough TV to know that, but wow. Watch this. Your fellowship with the Holy Spirit, your family, your community are impacted when you become a prisoner. Imagine the things you'll never get to do. Imagine the doors that will never open. Imagine the opportunities that you will inevitably screw up. Imagine the relationship that God was trying to join together and trying to put together, but because of an offense, that thing was aborted. What was it supposed to do? What was it supposed to produce before you got in your feelings? Oh my God, I need somebody to hear me right now. My fellowship with Holy Spirit is what is on the line when I walk in offense. Because it grieves Holy Spirit. Stephanie Nathan, welcome, darling. Woo, Lawyers Thompson, my God. Woo, Rabbi Ashkata. You can't pray over people. 
You can't, you can't, you can't do any. You are a prisoner. The wall is fortified. When you stay in your grief too long, do you realize you're really offended? You're offended. And offended takes on many, many colors and has many, many different fragrances. I'm offended. I'm offended you died. I'm angry. I'm offended that you that you did what you did. I'm offended. And so your grief is prolonged. I'm offended you left me by myself. I'm offended that I'm that you you did the exact thing I told you not to do. I'm offended. And your grief is prolonged. Whoa, my God. And I'm trying to get us to understand. It's not always even what you say, Brittany. It's what's already in your heart. Because what comes out of the mouth is what is in your heart. People say, oh, your grief takes time. No, come on, stop. Stop. Grief has an end. That's one of the things I love about Holy Spirit. He says, okay, you can grieve. But it has an end. It has to end. If not, you become a prisoner. You become a prisoner. And, and no one can love you again, Pastor Davis. No one can get to you. Are you listening to me? So your grief is prolonged. Your anger is prolonged. Your illness is prolonged. Your sickness and disease is incurable because your fellowship with Holy Spirit is on the line. What comes out of a man <laughs> is what defiles him. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. Oh, my God. Woo. And so many of you are still offended with your parents. I want to say this by the spirit of the living God. You are an adult and have never mastered your emotions. You've never mastered your emotions, even as an adult. And even after having received Holy Spirit, even after have received Christ and have gone to the upper room and been baptized in the Holy Ghost, even after that, you have not allowed Holy Spirit to come behind that wall. You've not allowed Holy Spirit to come behind that wall. Listen to me carefully. You've been to the upper room. You've received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You speak in tongues. You preach, pray, prophesy. You live a good life. But you never mastered your emotions as an adult. Because you never allowed Holy Spirit behind that wall. And because he is such a gentleman, he will not knock your wall down. You've never mastered your emotions. You've carried an offense through childhood. You carried an offense through adolescence. You carried an offense through your teenage years. You carried an offense in your youth, you carry that offense in your young adult age. And every time you get more offended, you put another brick on that wall. Whoa, Shea. Whoa, you get offended, you put another brick. You add another five bricks. You cement it and mortar it in. Church hurt, preacher hurt, marriage hurt, relationship hurt, trauma, death, arguments, disagreements, and you keep building the wall. Keep building the wall. 
and you use your offense, your anger to fuel the building of the fortification of your wall. And no one can penetrate that. You won't allow Holy Spirit to come in. Welcome Kenya. You won't allow Holy Spirit to come in and help you dismantle that wall because now the wall is a sign of protection. Can't nobody love you like that. Can't nobody engage you like that. Can't nobody navigate with you, partner with you, work with you and every time time i say something or every time someone says something you 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 react and and tear up everything no nobody so you are you are you are minimizing your own potential because you will not allow holy spirit to come in that wall okay holy spirit you can help me over here okay holy spirit you can help me over here because you are my helper you can help me raise my children you can help me with this uh job you can help me but this wall the wall of offense mm -mm. no i'm not letting you in there <laughs> I'm not letting you behind that wall. And every time you get offended, you build the wall higher, stronger, wider. And you have never dealt with your own liability. You've never dealt with them. <laughs> Prison situations, Dr. Kadisha. You've never, you've never dealt. You, ne you are grown. You are old of age. You can buy liquor, go to the military. You can vote, but you have never dealt with your offenses. And as a grown man and a grown woman, you are still without the mastery of your own emotions. You can stay angry for days and months and years. You can operate, you can go to the pulpit and preach a powerful message. You can minister in music. You can pray in the prayer room. You've seen miracles, healings, signs and wonders but you have never mastered. You are still clinging. You are still entitled. <clears throat> you are a grown person that still expects things that nobody human can do. You have inordinate affections driven by the wrong type of love. You're in situations now because your behavior is dictated by your trauma, by your anger, you are now in situations that you were never born to be in. But because you have never dealt with the offense, the trauma, the event, you've never dealt with the episode. Never dealt with it. You never went in and said, I'm going to take that brick down. That brick is coming off. You continue to build your wall. And now your behavior is a stench in the nostrils of God. And now your fellowship with Holy Spirit is compromised. <laughs> Woo. You are contentious and argumentative. Hard to get along with. Never see the good. And you become either overly religious. You become almost consumed. If you have been raised in a strict environment, then religion becomes your addiction. Or you get into bad behavior. You get into wrong relationships and you justify. I want you to go to Romans chapter number 14, Romans chapter number 14, and ultimately betrayal takes place. Ultimately, 
You wonder how people became the offender? They lived offended. <laughs> how do how do people become the offenders? They they live offended. And they feel justified in being a, an offender because they are offended. And when you are offended, you will ultimately listen to me very carefully. You think you're playing games, folks. You're not playing games. You're not playing games. You're not playing with a devil that doesn't understand. You're not playing with some chump warrior. You're not playing with some, some cheesy demon. Some No, you're talking about somebody that was strong enough to overthrow heaven. And ultimately, when you are an offended person, you will eventually betray others. And if betrayal is not dealt with, it will ultimately lead to hatred. <laughs> Woo, shaka. Mm. And if we don't forgive, if we don't allow Holy Spirit in that in that space, it will affect your relationship with God, your fellowship with God, and everyone else that you come in contact with. And if betrayal is not dealt with, it ultimately leads to hatred. I want to get that up. Let me find that. Woo, my God, my God. I want you to hear this because we are, we are, we are not serious about offense. We are not serious about how, how damning this is. And because you are an adult, now you see it in your children. Now you see it as children uh, coming close to you and being engaged. It leads to gluttony. It leads to drunkenness. It leads to uh, poverty. It leads to sickness and disease. It leads to you medicating yourself with addictions and drugs and sex and church and ministry. Now you don't even know who you are. Because you have lived in a space called offense. It leads to depression. It leads to suicide. I was offended as a young woman. I got very hurt in my first marriage. And I said, I'm going to kill myself. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I was an intercessor on the prayer line every night. I was speaking in tongues and God was doing a great work, a mother of two beautiful children. And I decided to punish them, not my children, but him and them. So I am going to kill myself. And that's all it is, selfishness selfishness but how long were you offended before you got to the space of betrayal how long was judas offended before it got to the place of betrayal an offended person will eventually betray and if betrayal is not dealt with then you will ultimately hate are you hearing me? Ooh. <laughs> How many of you understand that it is it is a, such a serious thing to be offended? Oh my God. It is such a serious thing to be offended that you can can see signs and wonders. 
You can do all of that and still become an offender. Now watch this. In, 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 in Romans 14 and 21, mm, I don't really want to go there. I want to go up to 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. So therefore, verse 19, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one pray and edify one another. And Paul is talking then about arguing over food, arguing over what you should eat, what you can't eat, arguing over days, holy days. Y'all getting these crazy arguments. But all it is is just offended people, just people being offended. Now, your position in God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Write that in the chat. That is your position in God. Righteousness, that's right standing with God and right standing with others. It is peace. It is the peace with God and it is the peace of God and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is your posture in God righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is what our posture is. That is what our position in Christ should be yielding in our lives. Righteousness, right standing with God, and right standing with others. Good morning, son. God bless you, Bishop. Woo, my God, are you listening to me? Righteousness, right standing with God and right standing with others. Peace, the peace of God and peace with God and joy in the Holy Ghost. And nothing, not one offense should ever cause any of these to be compromised. You should never allow any offense, any anger, any resentment, any trauma, any violation, any circumstance to compromise righteousness, to compromise peace, and to compromise joy in the Holy Ghost. And when you are offended, you don't have any of that. When you are living behind a fortified wall that you have built one offense after another. You have fortified it. You put mortar on it. Yes, you sing, but you sing from behind a wall. Yes, you pray, but you pray from behind the wall. Yes, you preach, but you preach from behind the wall. Yes, you serve the poor, but you do it from behind the wall. Yes, you go to work. Yes, you have some semblance of prosperity, but you do it behind the wall of offense. And your position in God, your posture in God should be righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You ever met people, and I've been in ministry so long, uh, 40, almost 49 years now. You ever meet people and they, oh, they're so full of fire in the pulpit. They, oh, there's something behind that mic. As long as they got a microphone singing or they lead in prayer, they intercede, and you think that heavens is open. You think, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Demons be trembling. Folks be, what? Oh, give, give, give to the poor and, 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 and give turkeys for Thanksgiving and toys for Christmas and, whoa, just do all kinds of things and just, whoa, just, whoa, just, Whoa, such a, such a saint, such a believer. Whoa, shut up. And then you get to know them or you get in a room with them and they're the most arrogant. They're the most nastiest. They're the most unapproachable. 
the most mean, gifted, talented, tongue-talking people you ever met in your life. Now, something is wrong with that. All of that shouldn't be in the same boat. Talented and mean, gifted and nasty. Can preach, the, the old saints say the horns off a billy goat, but can't get along with nobody. You ever met folks like that? Can sing till tears leak out of your eyes, but always causing a disruption, always in some kind of, have you ever met people like that, that are bipolar in the spirit? Of course you have. But are you one of them? These things compromise your fellowship with Holy Spirit. And you say, wonder why they so mean? Wonder why they like that? Man, what's up with that? Or suffer with deep depression. Suffer in deep spaces, suffer in deep depression, and 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 you you say what in the world? Oh God, tempers, raging tempers. What? Go and and and, and wear prayer cloths and lay on prayer cloths and fast and pray and just as unbalanced as they can be. So what is going on? That fortified city. Whoa. They don't want to do the work. So they are they are spots, Jude says, and I love these. They are trees with no fruit, clouds with no water. Woo! Are you hearing me? You want them to sing, but you don't want to sit with them at dinner because they carry offense. And offense has an odor. Oh, my God. We're going to talk about it. We're going to keep dwelling. We're going to keep going down into it in the name of Jesus. We're going to keep going back into it. Glory to God. I want you to understand that this is serious business. This is serious business. And with the next 10 days that are afforded to us in this year, I want you to allow, as I have allowed, Holy Spirit to help you dismantle the wall of offense, brick by brick. And every brick got a name. Every brick has a date. Every brick has an occurrence. I want you to dismantle it because you don't ever want to miss all that God has for you. I got to go. Woo, my God, my God, my God. Lord, we thank you and give you glory <laughs> that you gave us a helper. You gave us an advantage, gave us a paraclete. Woo, we ain't in this thing by ourselves so we can successfully navigate. In Jesus' mighty name. I got to go. I love y'all. <laughs> Share this on your pages and make sure that you tag others and make sure that they know that the school of Holy Spirit is changing lives every day, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. God bless those of you on free conference call, Instagram. Thank you, family. Thank you, Zoom. Thank you for those of you watching the replay in YouTube, on YouTube. Go to that YouTube page and subscribe. Join me for the next class. I love y'all. Bye. <laughs> Woo, glory to God in the 